God bless you everyone. Praise God. Minister Curtis Jones coming to you once again on this afternoon with a fresh word. Amen. We thank God for everything he's doing, his many blessings that he is bestowing upon us. And we thank God for each and every one of you, for you that just are able on today. Come on, let's put your hands together and just give God some praise on today. Let's give him thanks. Hallelujah for being so wonderful, so good. Hallelujah to us. God is so good and he's so deserving uh, of our praises. And we should just rejoice, amen, and just be glad in him for everything that he is, everything he's doing, for the love that he shows toward us, for just blessing us to see uh, each day and keeping us through the day. If you got good hair, that is something to be thankful for. You know, in the area, area where he blesses us, you know, we should be thankful. Uh, and just give God praise for just being such a good God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for another opportunity to come and minister your word to your people. Father, we give you praise for those that follow us and watch us the teachings. Father, we give you praise for your word. We thank you, God, for those that will receive your word, have been receiving it. We pray, God, you'll continue your blessings upon each and every one of them. Father, we pray miracles, Father God, and healings and deliverance. Father God, in the name of Jesus, an increase on the lives of those, Father God, that are receiving your word, Father God. It is not my word, but it is your word, Father God. For you says in your word that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And God, we know, God, that your Holy Spirit speaks through us. Hallelujah. And we are just your vessels and your instrument that you use us. Hallelujah. To speak your word to your people, Father. Oh, we give you thanks. I give you praise. God, I thank you for keeping me for all these years. God, for over 35 years, I give you thanks for keeping me, God. And I can say to this day, that I'm still saved. I still have a mind to serve you, Father God. It is still in my heart, hallelujah, to just serve you, God, and to please you. And I give you thanks, Father, for God, for just keeping me and my wife, Father, all the miracles that you work in our lives, Father God, and just how you have just been our protection, our shield. Oh, God, you've been our provider. You've been everything we need you to be, God. And I thank you right now, Father God. You are an awesome God and you're worthy to be praised. Jesus, thank you so much, Lord, that you are our Savior, our Lord, the one that has made it all possible, Lord. You are the one, Jesus, who made it so, God, that we can just come to you and, God, we can just approach you ourselves. Hallelujah. We don't need anybody else to go on our behalf, but, God, you made a way that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. That we can find grace and help in a time of need. I give you thanks, Father God, right now for Jesus. Lord, you are wonderful. You are the Lamb of God. Father God, now as we go forth, Father, continue to minister your word. Have your way in me. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you now. Take total control. Oh, speak through these lips of clay. I give you all the glory, honor, and praise, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, today we want to come, or this afternoon we want to come to you with this word. Amen. Amen. Um, We'll be coming from the book of Isaiah chapter 26, and we want to read verse 3 to you. And it reads, Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. Okay, I want to no, know. Okay. Ver, chapter 26, I was reading in 25. Chapter 26. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. Okay. We have a strong city, and this is verse 1. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulls. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keep it the truth may enter in. Okay. Verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. And if you to have your word with you, you can underline the word trust okay now I want to go to Psalms 37 and I want to take a look at verse 4 and 5 verses 4 and 5 Psalms 37 it said fret not thyself because of evil doers neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity okay I'm pausing. Okay. Now, once again, Psalms 37, verses 4 and 5. Verses, verse 4 reads, 
delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. All right, verse five. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. Underline the word trust. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he shall bring it to pass. Now, what is it that he will bring to pass? The desires of your heart. The Verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires, with an S, of thine heart. Then the next verse, say, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. You know, as long as we put our trust in God, whatever our hearts desire, God is capable of bringing our hearts' desires to pass. You already know our hearts. You know, man looks at our appearance. God looks at your heart. He knows what we need. He knows what we need. So, you know, it's a wonderful thing to see God blessing us with things that we desire in our hearts, you know, and uh, a lot of the things we don't even have to ask him for. Uh, he, he already knows. And God just just keep on blessing us. Somebody made a song. He keeps on blessing me over and over again. OK, now I want to read one more verse to you out of where well, actually I'm going to quote the verse to you. Proverbs chapter three, uh, verse five, verses five and six. And it's a familiar verse uh, uh, to you. And it reads, it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your paths. That is key. It starts with trust. That means you commit everything, your faith in God, okay, your hope in him, your desires in him, set your mind on him, he will keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him, you know, let's put everything on the table, if you will, and we believe in God, that he is able to handle whatever we bring before him. Trust in God. Our message today is trusting God is a good thing. Trusting God is a good thing. And you know, our last message we minister about bless all they who put their trust in God and I want to follow up this week by saying this trusting God is a good thing because he is the one that we should trust above everything else and anyone else he is the one that's why the scriptures in Proverbs 3 5 says trust in the Lord with all thine heart, God is reliable. God is dependable. He is a God of truth. He cannot lie. And you want to trust someone like that. God loves us. You don't have, ever have to worry about does he love you or not. Because it do make sense if you're going to trust in someone, that person really need to have love for you if you trust in them. Because when a person have love for you, they will go all out for you. They will stand by you. They will stick by you. They will come through for you. They will not let you down. That's why we can trust Jesus. Because Jesus Christ gave his life for us. Of course, he said in his word, he said, greater love have no man than this. That a man would lay down his life for his friends. Now we can trust a savior like that. He proved his love for us. And God 
have proven his love to us. He proved this love when he gave us his son. Yes, it is a good thing to trust in God. Hallelujah. I praise God for all the years that he has blessed me and my wife, my family. He has protected us. You know, and one thing about trusting God, you cannot waver. You can't get over in fear and doubt and unbelief. You have to be steadfast and unmovable. You got to plant your feet on the word of God and say in the word of God, I will trust because his word is him. I will put my trust in you, Lord. Now I want to talk about three men in the Bible who trusted God. And these men, the name, their names are, many of you are very familiar. You've heard of these men before. They are the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. For you that have heard the story before, you know the story. These men was challenged. Their faith was being tried. The king wanted them to bow down and to worship an idol god that he had erected or had built, had the people to build. He wanted everyone once they hear the music, everybody began to bow down and worship. And so the Hebrew boys, they fear and reverence their God, the Creator. And they refuse to bow down to the king's God. So the king threatened to throw them in the fiery furnace. He told the men to go and heat it seven times hotter. And sure enough, to make the long story short, he called for the soldiers and what have you. And they took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and they bound them up. And they proceeded to throw them in the fiery furnace. Remember, these men had put their trust in their God. Their trust outweighed their own lives. They believed that some way, somehow, God would come through for them. I remember in the word when they told the king, said, O king, the God which we serve, he will deliver us out of the fiery furnace. And if not, he will deliver us from out of your hands. They was bold. They were confident. Their faith was unwavering. These men obviously had sold out to their God. So when they opened the door to throw the three Hebrew boys in, the fire was so heated, it devoured the men that tried to throw them in. And sure enough, they threw them in. And what happened was the king when and looked in there. And when he looked in, he asked, did we not th throw in three? Well, I see a fourth one. And he looked like the son of God. God came through for the Hebrew boys because they put their trust in him. Do you remember the story of Daniel in the lion's den? When 
they had the king to sign a petition that anyone would be found praying to God would be thrown in the lion's den. It was all a setup. Okay. Well, nevertheless, they found Daniel praying and they took him and they threw him in the lion's den. The Bible let us know after Daniel had heard about the decree that the king had signed, that Daniel went in and he opened his windows and he kneeled down and prayed as he had did before uh, four times. He wasn't, his faith did not waver. He did not get in fear, but he stayed in faith and he trusted his God. This is a situation, this is a problem, God, that is bigger than I, it's larger than I. And you've never failed me. So Daniel put his trust in his God. Well, sure enough, they took Daniel and they throwed him in a lion's den. The king could not sleep. He could not rest. Because once again, it was a setup. He had got tricked into signing a decree. The king Nebuchadnezzar, he loved Daniel. But he couldn't get Daniel out. It took God to get Daniel out. And sure enough, the king got up and he went to the lion's den and he yelled out to Daniel, Oh Daniel, is thou God able to deliver thee from the mouths of the lions? And a voice cried out unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has shut the mouth of the lions. God came through for Daniel. And here Daniel, once again, I know that he was promoted. God bless him. Just like the Hebrew boys, I'm sure they got promoted. I remember the story of Joseph how Potiphar's wife had accused him of something that he did that he did not do. And sure enough, they took Joseph and they threw him back in the chambers. And so it came to pass that God worked it out where Joseph interpreted dreams when he was there. And the men dreams that he interpreted, they was released. Joseph told one of them to remember him. Of course, the man forgot Joseph. But what happened when he got back in Pharaoh's house Working for Pharaoh once again, where he once was, because Joseph had already told him that him that he would be once again working for Pharaoh. He told the other man that he would be killed. It came to pass just as Joseph said. So Pharaoh had a dream. No one could interpret his dream. And then this man remembered Joseph had interpreted a dream for him and it came to pass. Now Joseph could have had a lot of things on his mind. He could have really been worried, afraid, you name it, because of where he once was with Potiphar. And then how everything went downhill because of Potiphar's wife. And he found himself being locked up. So, to make the long story short, Pharaoh sent for Joseph. And Joseph went to Pharaoh. And he interpreted Pharaoh's dream. 
And sure enough, he got promoted. Pharaoh blessed him to become second to him. And he said, only on the throne will I be greater than you. Trusting God is a good thing. Now, maybe many of you, you that are already saved, been saved for, for quite some while, you can remember maybe some times or situations in your personal life, lives, where you was believing God for something, you were trusting God. I want to ask you a question. Did he come through for you? Have he ever let you down? That way you know that the word we're ministering today is a true word. It pays to trust in God. I remember a time in my life when I specifically prayed a prayer to God about something. And it came from my heart. At that time, I would say my heart was heavy and I really needed God to do this thing that I was asking him to do. I was believing God for the wife that would love me the way that I would love her. I was believing God and trusting God that he would bless me with the wife that would love him the way that I love him. That was my prayer to God specifically. And sure enough, God brought it to pass. Unknowing to me, it happened as if it was a dream. I met the woman that I have been praying to God about. And I had met her at one point in my life when I was younger. And that was all. We pretty much met, got acquainted, and that was the end of it. And many years went by, many years. No talking, no communicating, but I could never forget her. I could never forget her. For some reason, I just couldn't forget her. Whenever I would see her mother, I would tell her mother, would you tell Clarice? I said, hello. I will always do that. Not knowing what God plan was concerning me and her. And I went on with my life. And I'm sure she was going on with her life. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about a specific prayer that I prayed to God. I wouldn't have had never guessed or dreamed by no chance that I would end up with her. Especially with the way things was going in my life. It ain't like I was actually, I had talked her out to look specifically for her. But in my heart, she was in my heart, obviously. And even though I did not know, knowledgeable wise, that she was in my heart, God knew it. And sure enough, at the right time, in the right place, we met again. After many, many, and I say many, many years had passed, way beyond eight, nine to 10 years, probably plus. And we met again. And we started talking again. And we never stopped talking. We got better acquainted to the, to the place where I proposed to her. And she accepted. 
and in the year 1990, we got married. And it was a godly, godly thing. We committed wholeheartedly to each other, to the Lord. Starting afresh, repenting the, all the works, the whole nine yards. Just trusting God that he would make it work. And whatever we would need, he would provide. And to this day, it's been 32 years and we're still together by the grace of God. Hallelujah. That is a praise report. I'm still saved. She's still saved. The both of us has gone into ministry. God has blessed us with wonderful kids whom we love dearly. And I know God got his hands on all three of them because I've already seen in a dream my boys in heaven with me. I've seen it. God showed it to me. So I know that he got his hands on those boys. I'm trusting God, hallelujah. For my entire family. My wife, she is a virtuous woman. She loved the Lord. She loved her family. She loves me. I love her. I give God praise and I thank God for my wife of 32 plus years. Trusting God is a good thing. There was nothing that I did on my own. It was God. One day at a time. Through the, the rough times, the good times, the hard times, maybe some bad times. A few struggles here and there. Through it all. I'm sure Joseph, he went through struggles. He had some hard times. So did Daniel, so did Shaq, Meshach, and Abednego. They all had hard times. But God came through for each one of them. And he has come through for me and my family. Many of you out there that's watching, you can be a witness. He have come through for you also. He came through for you too. And he will come through for you. For you that are trusting God, for you that need God to do something special in your life, your lives. I challenge you today to put your trust in him. When you pray, believe that you will receive what you're asking God for. As the scripture says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive it and you shall have it. Once again, your trust cannot be wavering. Let not a man think that he shall receive anything from God. You don't doubt. For a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. You can't, I wonder if God gonna do this for me. Uh, I hope God do it. Maybe he'll do it. Ah, I really need God to do it. No, you need to lock in. You need to buckle down. You can even confess out of your mouth and say, I'm believing God for this thing. And I know that he knows me the word of God says the hairs on our head are numbered. The eyes of the Lord is in every place, beholding that which is good and evil. For you that are born again and saved, 
The word of God said, the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous. His ears is open unto our prayers. God sees all, he knows all. Once again, he knows your hearts. Man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at your heart. So, whether it be your healing that you need God to do for you, in every area of your life, put your trust in God. God never fails. He's undefeated. Now, I hope that everyone understands when I say God, that includes Jesus. I'm not leaving him out by no means. Because Jesus said, I am the door and I'm the way. So when I say God, I am most definitely talking about Jesus Christ as well, who is my Lord and my Savior. And he wants to be your Lord and your Savior for you that do not know him and doesn't have a relationship with the Father. Jesus Christ is the way to the Father. He said, no man come to God except by me. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So to put your trust in God, by all means, your first step, sir, ma'am, is that you put your trust in God concerning his son, Jesus Christ. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3, 5. With all thine heart, trust in the Lord. Put your trust in Jesus. Believe that he will save you like he promised. Whosoever call on the name of the Lord will be saved. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and a man hear my voice open, I come into him, so with him, him with me. Yes, Jesus Christ wants to be Lord and Savior of our lives. And for those reasons, we can trust him and we should trust him. In so many words, he wants to be in control. He wants us to rely on him and to depend on him. We can do nothing without him on our own when I'm talking about those things that that seems to be impossible for us we need God we need Jesus Christ to move to intercede for us so we go to him we go to him in prayer 